Hello dear friends, uh, hello dear friends and subscribers. Uh, this is your host Ram uh, welcoming you to the regular edition uh, of the Cricket Happening Show here. And well, uh, today once again uh, it's going to be the warm-up matches uh, in the World Cup 2015. Uh, we have some warm-up matches happening. First I'll be talking about those matches that uh, uh, took place yesterday. And uh, let me tell you, this warm-up match yesterday, we had a huge upset. Uh, in the warm-up matches and as I said, uh, Zimbabwe uh, under the tutelage uh, of uh, Dave Watmore uh, really, really uh, perking up things I would say. Uh, well, let's, uh, if, you, if you look at the performances of Zimbabwe, uh, they gave a run for the money for New Zealand and unfortunately the match didn't go the old hog. Uh, and now, uh, yesterday we had a match where Zimbabwe went on to have a match which went the whole hog and they defeated Sri Lanka. So that is a big upset according to me as far as warm-ups are concerned. So Zimbabwe have already started their um, upsets here. And Zimbabwe, let me tell you, as I said, under uh, the coaching of uh, Dave Watmore, already they are showing signs of uh, something uh, which is uh, really, really, I would say, I'm not surprised at all because as I said, Dave Watmore has been a wonderful coach. Uh, he has transformed the teams into world beaters. Uh, and why not Zimbabwe? And Zimbabwe definitely, definitely learning a lot under Watmore and producing the goods as and when they require. So the first match that I'm going to look at while I'm talking to you here, okay, just giving you a summary. One is uh, Sri Lanka versus Zimbabwe. It was a huge upset. I thought this was the biggest upset of the uh, in the ICC World Cup warm-up match, uh, where Sri Lanka won by a big margin. If you look at the margin, uh, it was a pretty big margin that they won by. They won by seven wickets. Uh, against uh, Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka as you know what a team they are uh, and uh, they were defeated so that, that would have come as a real rude shock for Sri Lanka there uh, and as far as other matches were concerned England and Pakistan it was a very well fought match in the end uh, Pakistan prevailing with uh, Ms. Bawla keeping his school uh, and playing a very good knock of 91 given good support by Umar Akmal uh, at the closing stages of the game Australia uh, absolutely crushed United Arab Emirates by a huge margin, just uh, absolutely expected. New Zealand versus South Africa was a, a match where New Zealand put up a big score on the board uh, and the South Africans uh, really found it difficult uh, to really, really get an answer to the New Zealand uh, uh, bowlers. Uh, and other than that, uh, well, I can only say uh, that um, uh, the two matches which are happening right now uh, is two warm-up matches which are happening. One is between West Indies uh, who, are, um, who are taking on uh, the Irishmen and West Indies are 96 for 3 after 22 overs. Uh, I, I'll take you back to that match later and Bangladesh uh, currently uh, playing against, in, in fact I'm very sorry, it was uh, West Indies uh, who are actually playing against Scotland 96 for 3 and Bangladesh are taking on Ireland and Bangladesh are 79 for 2 after 20 overs. Well I'll come back to that later but let's go on to that Sri Lanka versus Zimbabwe match which really took the cake yesterday and this was something, according to me, uh, it was the biggest upset in these warm-up matches here so far. So it was Sri Lanka who batted first. And well, uh, they definitely, uh, the, the bowling from the Zimbabweans was absolutely on the money. Uh, in fact, um, uh, if you look at the bowling figures, I'll come back to that later. Just having a look at the Sri Lankan card here. Uh, Sri Lanka were, all, um, uh, they were, they made only 279 for 8. In fact, I thought Sri Lanka did well to reach 279 for 8 because... Uh, the bowlers had uh, really established a stranglehold on the Sri Lankan batsmen and it was very, um, very difficult for the Sri Lankans to actually wriggle out uh, of such a situation. Uh, Thiramane made 30 of uh, 39 balls with 3 fours. Uh, Sankakra was cheaply dismissed for 8. Mahela Jayavadane uh, could contribute only 30 of 33 balls with 5 fours. Uh, Karnaratne contributed a neat looking 58 of 71 balls with 3 fours. Chandimal making 29 of 46 balls with 1 four. And Mendes. Uh, making uh, Jivanta Mendes was the highest scorer, contributing 51 of 51 balls with four fours. 17 from Tisra Perez, bat of 19 balls with two fours. Kulashekra making nine. Shenanayake was not out on 25. He was the one who did some pyrotechnics at the end of the innings to uh, take Sri Lanka to a total uh, which, uh, which one thought was a very good total, especially considering that it was Zimbabwe. One thought that uh, Sri Lanka had put up a, a fairly good total on the board of um, 279 for eight. Ranga Hairat was not out on four, but uh, let, me, let, let us look at the bowling. The bowling was um, absolutely on the money, I said. Uh, the Zimbabwean bowlers uh, bowled to a plan here. Panyangra, five overs, no maiden, one for 37. Chatara, nine overs, no maiden, 
none for 57. Williams um, was very economical, also took the wickets. 10 overs, one made in 35 runs in three wickets. Mupari, wow, six overs, no made in one for 25. Five overs for 24 for uh, Tafadva Kamangozi, the leg spinner. Prosper Tsaya, one for 34. None for 26 for Sikandar Raza. Solomon Mayan, four overs, one for 29. Chigumbra, one over, no made in none for eight. As far as the Zimbabwean reply was concerned, well, they, uh, they, did, they, they didn't get a good start. The Zimbabwe probably thought that Sri Lanka uh, would be in a position to probably... Um, you know, see to it that Zimbabwe doesn't reach the target. But, uh, well, despite Zimbabwe losing two early wickets, they were 35 for two at one stage when they lost Sikandar Raza to Kulashekara for seven, and Chibaba was into the pavilion for 22 of as many balls with four fours. And after that, uh, I, can, I can say one thing, a Sri Lankan attack, uh, that first the bowlers did the job for Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwean bowlers did the job, and then, as, especially considering that Sri Lanka had a very, very strong attack um, uh, Lasit Malinga, you know what Lasit Malinga is, One need not, I need not even tell you dear fans and subscribers what Lasit Malinga can be, how devastating he can be and look at his bowling figures, Zimbabwe, uh, the batsmen, especially Hamilton Masakadza and Brendan Taylor uh, really uh, saw to it uh, that they played Malinga very well and uh, in the, I mean, one, one thought that their strategy was to actually keep out Malinga and then concentrate but even Malinga had to come in for some severe tap with seven overs uh, leaking 46 runs to to show no wicket to his name. Kula Shekara, five overs no maiden, one for 23. Lakmal was uh, taken for 56 runs of his seven overs with one wicket. Angelo Matthews, five overs no maiden, none for 33. Uh, Tisra Pereira, 2.2 .2 overs no maiden, none for 13. Senanayaka, five overs for 34. Mendes, three overs for 20. Five overs for 27 for Dilshan. And Ragana had six overs no maiden, none for 27. Let's look at the Zimbabwe. So, as I said, Zimbabwe were chasing a very good total of 279. Uh, they were 35 for 2 uh, after uh, 7 overs, in the 7th over. And look at what happened after that. After that, um, the Sri Lankan bowlers had to really, had to work hard, but uh, with all their toil, nothing could really come to fruition as uh, Hamilton Masakadza and Brendan Taylor uh, went into a very, very good partnership. In fact, uh, they went on to add a 127 run partnership and thought it was a winning partnership. Hamilton Masakadza, well, he interspersed this, uh, interspersed this uh, very uh, defensive play with some beautiful strokes around the wicket. 117, he was still there at the end, uh, unconquered on 117 of 119 deliveries with 8 fours and 3 sixes when he spanked the spinners all across the ground. Brendan Taylor, uh, well, he also played, I would say, second fiddle to Hamilton Masakadza. But uh, what a partnership that was, 63 of 68 balls to 6 fours, which ensured that Zimbabwe uh, wouldn't go this opportunity, go a begging, as Hamilton Masakadza and Brendan Taylor really, really lent into the Sri Lankan bowling uh, by, uh, by taking a lot of runs, and the partnership uh, had taken the score to 162 in the 28th over. So Brendan Taylor, and the partnership was broken by Dilshan, uh, who took Brendan Taylor's wicket. And even after that, probably Sri Lanka would have felt that they still had a chance, but all those hopes were absolutely quashed as Sean Williams, uh, showing lots of experience, uh, lots of maturity, uh, really gave good company to Hamilton Masakaja, and both of them uh, both uh, nurtured the Zimbabwean innings to victory without any further mishap. With Masakaja 170 not out, not out, Sean Williams not out on 51 of 46 deliveries with seven fours, and that was the end of the match. As I said, Sri Lanka causing. So the Zimbabwe causing a huge upset uh, in this ICC warm -up, World Cup warm-up matches here uh, so far when they, uh, when they actually defeated uh, the Sri Lankans, the strong Sri Lankans, by seven wickets. Who had a, absolutely a full-strength team playing. And, well, let me tell you, Dave Watmore has already transformed Zimbabwe into a real fighting unit. Not only a fighting unit, they are looking like a winning unit because this is a huge upset according to me. Well, let's have a uh, look at the next match. The next match that happened, England versus Pakistan at Sydney. It was a very, very uh, competitive match, one could say, uh, because both of them had a chance. It was England who batted first, put on 250 for 8 of their 50 overs. As far as England were concerned, well, Moin Ali made 4, Alex Hales 31, but Gary Balance was very impressive in his knock of 57 of 81 balls with 4 fours. Uh, got into a very good partnership with Joe Root uh, to stem the tide for England. And Joe Root also... Uh, played in the sense that he was the anchor man for the England innings as he made 85 of uh, 89 balls with four fours and one six and the score 
Uh, well, after that, uh, Chris Jordan, um, towards the end, coming in and clubbing some uh, good uh, boundary and a six in his unbeaten knock of 31 of 27 balls, took the England score to 250 for eight. Just having a look at the Pakistani bowling and talking about the Pakistani bowling, it was good to see Sohail Khan uh, into, into the picture. And Sohail Khan was playing his first match and I thought he bowled superbly. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the Yorker uh, that he uh, bowled, it was a spearing Yorker, which was onto Butler's stumps. And Josh Butler was trying to play the scoop shot that he normally plays. But, uh, well, he could only see uh, to his utter chagrin that his furniture was shattered. So Sohail Khan uh, bowling superbly. And then we saw Hassan Adil uh, hitting the pitch very well, getting the ball to move about. And he was the one who gave the breakthrough when he picked up the wicket of Moin Ali pretty cheaply. Uh, he had 7 overs, 1 made him 1 for 27. Wahab Riyas, 10 overs, 1 for 46. Afridi was costly, 10 overs, 1 made him 1 for 59. So Hale, 4 overs, no made him 1 for 21. But look at Yasir Shah, the red and black spinner, really um, exhibiting his wares in, in some wonderful fashion there. 10 overs, 1 made him 40, 45 runs and 3 wickets. And what a googly produced to really fox Ravi Bopara. Ravi Bopara couldn't do anything about this googly, which was bowled by Yasir Shah. And he saw his stumps uh, going for a toss there. And 250 for 8 was what England made. Now as far as Pakistan were concerned, uh, well, uh, with the, in the absence of Mohammad Afiz, Nasir Jamshid, uh, who has been rushed into the team, he opened with Ahmed Shahzad, and both of them were dismissed for 1 and 2 respectively. And uh, England were looking pretty strong, because Anderson and Broad were really balling in the right areas. They were getting the mool to move about a lot, and uh, life was not easy for, pa pa for the Pakistani innings. But after that, Yunus Khan making 19 of 40 balls with two fours, uh, Harry Sohail making 33 of 56 balls with 1-4, but it was cool as a cucumber. Miss Baal Haq, who really, really, uh, really, I would say, sussed up the situation very well and decided uh, to stay put at the crease and ensured that he would be there when the victory would be coming. And that's what he precisely did. And uh, it was also very important uh, to get support. And uh, that particular support uh, came in the form of Umar Akman. Umar Akman normally uh, is a very talented player. He has promised much. Uh, but uh, basically he has not lived up to the expectations. But uh, he really, really surprised everybody by giving very good support to Ms. Baal Haq and also playing some very, very nice strokes that he is capable of. And both this partnership was the one which was the turning point as the score went on from 78 for 4. In fact, England had everything covered. They had Pakistan innings on the rack at 78 for 4 in the 23rd over. But then after that, it was all Umar Akmal and Ms. Baal Haq uh, really seeing to it, as I said, Umar Akmal giving good company was a very, very welcome feature for the Pakistani batting lineup. As both of them, uh, Ms. Bala got the much needed support that he wanted from Umar Akmal. 65 of 66 balls with 3 4s and 3 6s. Maksud making 20 of 12 deliveries with 4 4s. And Shahid Afridi slamming the boundary uh, to hit the winning run. And Ms. Bala once again missing his century, not out of 91, of 99 deliveries, 5 4s and 2 6s. The English bowling was uh, very good, I would say. James Anderson and Stuart Bond, I thought, uh, bowled really well. 10 overs, no made in 2 for 42. 9.5 overs, no made in 51 runs and 2 wickets for Stuart Broad. Uh, Jordan, 9 overs, no made in 1 for 51 was costly. Treadwell, 1 for 43. Moin Ali, 8 overs, none for 44. Bopara, 2 overs for 14. And Juru, 1 over, no made in none for 3. And what a victory for Pakistan. Uh, in fact, Pakistan winning the match by 4 wickets against England. And, uh, and, and I thought uh, this was a very good match that happened in the warm-up matches. Now the next match that we are looking at is between New Zealand and South Africa. New Zealand and South Africa was played at the Hagley Oval in Christchurch. Uh, New Zealand batted first and they put up a very very good score on the board. In fact they put up a huge score on the board of 331 for 8 uh, driven in by uh, an innings from uh, Kane Williams of 66, 41 from Ross Taylor, 26 coming from Martin Guptill, 59 from everybody contributed and that was the precise reason um, New Zealand stood on a score of 331 for 8 in South Africa. 24 from Elliot, 21 from Anderson, Ronchi making 90s, so everybody contributed. There is only one person who went on to a single digit and, and that too, Nathan McCallum was not out. Other than that, everyone, uh, in, in fact, uh, in fact, Saudi was not out on one. So other than that, each and every person reached double figures and I thought they made uh, some sizable contributions. So 331 for 8 on the, on the board for them. The balling, Vernon Philander, 7 overs, no maiden, 2 for 59. Uh, Markel, 7 overs, none for 31. Abbott, uh, 2 for 35. In fact, uh, Dale Steen didn't play yesterday. He was rested. Uh, and um, and um, Parnell, 7 overs, 2 for 52. Imran Tahir, none for 52. 
Uh, Fungiso 1 for 43, Domini 6 hours 1 for 35, and Duplessis 3 hours no made and none for 21. As far as South Africa were concerned, well, uh, they, they never got going, one could say, uh, because of the strikes that Trent Bold was doing. Trent Bold was the one who did all the early strikes. By first, uh, clean bowling, uh, really, Rosu for 2. Uh, then he had the wicket of Duplessis, caught, for, caught by Latham for 8. And also, Bold went on to dismiss David Miller for 4. And uh, that was the... Um, that was the strikes, early strikes by the uh, trend bowl, the left arm bowler, pace bowler, which had this uh, uh, the South African innings really not get, uh, going, uh, getting off track, and it was uh, it, it was a pretty uh, pretty difficult um, uh, situation for South Africa. And South Africa, well, the uh, A.P.D. Villiers was there, and J.P. Dumini was there at the crease, and Hope was there. As A.P.D. Villiers, as you know, he can transform a match from nothing into something very great. But, well, nothing happened. Vettori, with all his experience, picked up the wicket of A.B.D. Villiers, out for 24 or 28 balls with four fours. J.P. Domini tried to hang in there, and uh, he got good support from one arm Philander, uh, who really lent him very, very good support, I thought, uh, to take the score on from... They, they took the score on from 62 to 183, with uh, Domini and Philander giving him good company. But then Philander, after making 57 of 84 balls with four fours, was a goner, and then uh, Dumini was left alone uh, to actually uh, wage a lone battle, and that was something pretty uh, tough. And Dumini tried his bet, but uh, Bolt actually clean bowled him for 80. Uh, Bolt picked up a five wicket bag. Uh, what a wonderful uh, bowling um, performance from Trent Bolt. Uh, he picked up a five wicket bag. Uh, Vernon Philander went 57 of 84 balls with four fours. Dumini was out for 80 of 98 deliveries with eight fours, uh, and that was it. After that, uh, the tail folded. 197 all out. And a very, very big win for New Zealand against South Africa. They won the match by 134 runs. And I thought that was a real boost as far as New Zealand, is, New Zealand were concerned. Now, Trent Bolt, 9.2 overs, no maiden, 51 runs and 5 wickets, picking up his 5-wicket uh, bag. And that was absolutely commendable. Saudi 8 overs, no maiden, 1 for 29. With Tori, 7 overs, no maiden, 2 for 29. Uh, Mitchell McLennan, 8 overs, no maiden, 2 for 23, bowled superbly. McCallum 3 overs, none for 13. Miles 4 overs, no maiden, none for 21. And Elliot 5 overs, no maiden, none for 30. So, that, uh, so uh, New Zealand going on to a very huge win uh, over South Africa. Now the next match that we are going to talk is about a very one-sided match that happened uh, between the Australians, uh, the hosts Australia and United Arab Emirates. Australia taking on United Arab Emirates. Australian innings, well, uh, they amassed, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say they amassed uh, the... Uh, they piled up a score of 304 for 8, but the good thing was that Michael Clark, we could, one could see Michael Clark in action for the first time, and Michael Clark uh, opened yesterday with Aaron Finch, uh, and they went on to a, a century partnership. 123 runs were added uh, by these two batsmen, with Michael Clark making 64 of 61 balls with 8 fours, Aaron Finch making 61 of 68 balls with 6 fours and 2 sixes. Good contributions coming in from Shane Watson, 34 of 40, 1 four and 1 six. Stephen Smith uh, making 59 of 51 with 4 fours and 1 6, and George Bailey contributing 46 of as many balls, 3 fours. And after that, uh, it was, um, uh, I thought after that, um, it was Australia trying to really up the tempo, trying to get as much runs as possible. Uh, that resulted uh, in Australia losing a lot of wickets in the bargain, and finally, the Australia had to be content with 304 for 8 of their 50 overs. Mohamed uh, Naveed of uh, the United Arab Emirates, 8 overs, 1 minute, 1 for 55. Javed, 8 overs, 1 minute, 1 for 42. I thought he bowled very well. Krishna Chandran, 9 overs, no maiden, 3 for 50. Um, Nasir Aziz, 10 overs, no maiden, 3 for 56 for Nasir Aziz. 8 overs, 1 for 53 for Mohamed Takir, uh, the, the captain, and uh, Kurram Khan, 7 overs, no maiden, 1 for 43. The United Arab Emirates, they were, uh, they, were, they were left a very, very big target, and especially considering that they were playing against uh, such champions, Australia, uh, it was always going to be difficult. And uh, looking at the United Arab Emirates card, well, they folded from 116. Uh, they couldn't really uh, fathom the uh, bowling of the pace bowlers. They couldn't really, uh, uh, I would say, uh, they, they were absolutely uh, toothless uh, against uh, Australian pace attack, uh, which was uh, really coming at them very, very hard. Amjad Ali was out for 21 of 29 balls with two fours. Uh, and then we had uh, the other chief contributor was uh, Swapnil Patil, who was the highest scorer with 31 of 45 balls with five fours. He's also the wicket keeper of the team, as you know. 19 from Shaiman Anwar and 15 from Rohan Mustafa. So 116 all-out UAE, UAE were crushed by Australia, one could say. 
and Australia uh, getting on to a huge victory by 188 runs. The bowling as far as the Australians uh, were concerned, uh, Mitchell Johnson, 6 overs, no made and 1 for 32. Hazelwood, 2 for 12, 2 for 21 for Cummins, uh, 1 apiece to Glenn Maxwell and Mitchell Marsh, 1 to Watson, Xavier Doherty, 2 for 3. So that, uh, that really wraps up the uh, four matches that were played yesterday in the warm-ups. Now let's have a look at the cricket update here. Two matches are being played today and I'm going to take you live to that particular game and see what's happening. Well, um, I'm probably, I'm going to leave you on the cricket happening show. Uh, right now, I see that West Indies and Scotland are in battle here at the Sydney Cricket Ground and West Indies won the toss and elected to bat against Scotland and West Indies currently are placed at 133 for 3. Uh, we are in the 29th over. Uh, Dwayne Smith was out for 45, 47 balls with 5 fours and 2 six. And Bravo, Darren Bravo contributing 43 of 70 balls with 4 fours. Uh, but Chris Gale was out very cheaply for just one run. Uh, and, then, and while I'm talking to you, there's one more wicket which has fallen. And that is the wicket of, um, uh, I think it is, uh, it's uh, Marlon Samuels who has just been dismissed. Uh, yeah, in fact, Darren Bravo, as I said, who was batting on 43, has been just been dismissed. He has been sent back to the pavilion by Huck. He's out for 43 of 72 balls with four fours as I'm talking. Uh, Dinesh Ramadan is not out on 32 of 43 balls. Uh, I thought uh, Scotland are doing well here because West Indies are 136 for four currently in the 30th over. One wicket to Wardler, one wicket to Evans and one wicket to Josh Davey. So let's have a look at the uh, other, other update here. And this is a match which is happening between Bangladesh and Ireland. And Bangladesh, Ireland won the toss and invited the Bangladeshis to bat. And Bangladesh, I thought, are really struggling here because after 30 overs, the scoreline says Bangladesh are 113 for 5. So that is not good going from Bangladesh, one reckons. Tommy Mikbal has been cheap, was cheaply dismissed for 4. Anamul Haq made 25 of 72 balls. He had no boundaries and no sixes in that. Soumya Sarkar was the, has been the highest scorer so far. 45 of 51 balls with 2 fours. He was run out. 8 to Mominul Haq and 8 to Shakib Hassan and Mushfiqur Rahim is still there. So that is the hope for Bangladesh. If at all, Bangladesh want to put up a score that they could defend. 113 for 5 is the current score. Mushfiqur Rahim is not around 6. And uh, the bowling has been absolutely top class, one could say. Sorensen had 2 for, um, uh, two for uh, 20, I suppose. 1 for 15 for John Mooney. Uh, Brian, none for 19. 1 for 13 for Craig Young. Uh, it's been surprising that Craig Young has not been, I mean, he, he was used only for one over, uh, but he has been a pretty costly there. Sterling, none for 22. None for 11 for Dockrell. 4 overs, no minimum, 1 for 11 for Andy McBride, the Rana Moss spinner. So that's the, so with this cricket update, dear fans and subscribers, uh, I have to unfortunately uh, end up this uh, cricket show today. I love to talk about cricket. Uh, I would love to, you know, give, give you a lot of cricket updates. But, you know, time is always a constraint, uh, uh, dear uh, fans and subscribers. So uh, that's the precise reason uh, I need to leave you on this cricket happening show. But it's a real pleasure to know, uh, pleasure to be here uh, talking to you uh, every day on this cricket happening show. And I do see the support is really, really forthcoming. People are loving the cricket show. And, uh, well, you keep subscribing to my Cricket Happening Show, dear fans and subscribers. And your host, Ram, is always there to entertain you on this Cricket Happening Show. Uh, well, with this um, live cricket update uh, from this, both these matches, and as you know, I will be covering both these matches uh, in its entirety uh, when, I, uh, when, I, when I do the summary of these two matches. So, until then, it's good night from your host, Ram Studios. Thank you.